Didn't yeah. I just like sat there scribbling. I'm like, okay, my goal's 36. He did 30. I have to give myself some room. So uh, I said, my goal's 36. My first demo, Saturday night. The woman keeps me waiting, keeps me waiting, keeps me waiting. Go ahead, sell her 700 bucks. I'm like, uh-oh, we're in big trouble. Second demo wouldn't even see me because it was so late. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I'm really sorry. We're going to have to reschedule. I'm like, no, no, Mrs. Jones, we can't reschedule. It's a push period. I have to beat Mike Arietta. No, nothing I could do about it. I go home. It's too late to call up old customers. I did not sleep that entire night. I sat there going through all my old customers, compiling a list of who I would call the next morning on my way. I already decided I wasn't going to drive to the conference. It was right near my house. It was about 20 minutes away. I called up the cab company, already ordered a cab <laughs> because I said, I'm sitting there calling old customers on the car ride over. But no. I still had a demo. I booked this demo way in advance. It was with my neighbor across the street. I had never seen her before. I met her just once or twice. Of course, I'd love to help you out. I built up Mike Arietta over the phone with her the week earlier because she was really going to see me on a Friday. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, Mrs. Jones? Can you help me out? Can you see me Sunday morning right before the conference? She was really excited. I sold her four grand, and then I went ahead and sold, um, what did that put me at? 29? Yeah, I went and sold six grand over the phone on the way to the conference. Wow. So I finished up 36111 And I tell this to them, and I'm like, I sold $36,000 in two weeks, and they freak out. They're like, whoa. I'm like, yes, at this point. I'm like, Mrs. Jones, Cutco is way too expensive to get just to help out a girl with her goals. It's not like Girl Scout cookies. It's not like you can just buy something and, you know, I'm on my way. But at the end of my demo, I may not promise you're going to buy everything you want, but I will promise that you will see why everybody else has been buying tons of Cutco. And this is actually that order form from that day. Where that woman... There it is. Um, Four Gs. Where that woman uh, was just so excited. She was so... She called me three times during SC1. Yeah. Three times. Aviva, did you beat him? <laughs> did we meet Mike? Did we beat Mike? She's like, do you need me to buy more? I'm like, yeah, I do need you to buy more, but I'm not going to do that. Oh, I went the next week to actually go sell her. Uh, the first week, I'm sorry, of SC2, I sold her 10 deluxe slicers at $117 a pop. She really liked her cut coat. I gave her one for free with this order. Okay, good. So That's a neat. I, I gave her one of those for free. Yeah, seeds, yeah. I show them that people have been writing up about me. Everyone loves a winner. So, you know, it's not so cocky in the sense of cocky, but everyone does love working yeah, with a winner. Of course. And they like seeing my success. Uh, and then I showed them the President's Club. I said, you know, I've actually never met the president of the company. I'm really excited to get to meet him. And I have them read a little bit of this. I say, this is very impressive when, you know, you go on to a job. Because mm -hmm. I may not be doing knives for the rest of my life. And this is just great for any, um, anything I go into. It's just great to have this on my resume. But, you know, another reason the business schools really like this company is because it's because of things like this. We have a mandatory sales meeting every week for about two hours. And it's not about, you know, teaching us how to sell the knives and what the knives are for. It's just teaching us about business and different things. You know, we get awards like this. They don't mean very much, but I actually really, um, you know, it's great when I get to share these with my customers. When I sell $1,000 in one week, uh, I get an award like that. When I sell 3000 in a week, I get one like that. 5000 in a week is the highest that the company goes up to. Cool. So I actually went and sold 14789 in a week, and my manager said, oh, hey, Aviva, it only goes up to 5000 so he felt so bad about it. He started designing ones for me every week. <laughs> it's I, Andrew, huh? Uh, yeah, well, Ariel's actually. Ariel, okay. Andrew. Yeah, but, um, and then every week that I do that. <laughs> okay. And remember those six, uh, the, the $36,000 push? Yeah, well, these were those two weeks. That's they were funny. back to back. I went and broke the office record for $16,280, and then the next week, $16,342. And this was actually... Um, my goal that week was just to break my record from the week before. And now, of course, did, my yeah. goal is to break my best week ever. And um, when you have days where you sell $1,000, again, it's not about the, in, the money for me. Thank God I don't need to do this for the money. I live at home. I go to school right nearby. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, it's just about the work experience and what I'm learning and gaining. When you sell $1,000 in one day, it's actually called a grand day. Okay. And I've had 59 days like this. I'm actually about to have my 60th. For my only appointment for today, and I'll tell that to them. But that's yes. awesome, 60. And um, I'm up to I'm up to 60 today. Will be I have two appointments tonight. Today will be my 60th grand day, and um, my biggest day ever. Uh, again, Mrs. Jones, I have had so many just because during the fall I only work one day a week. When I won this scholarship, it was from just working one day a week. And when I go back to them in school, I'm going to be you know I'm only working one day a mm -hmm. week, Mrs. Jones. So that's really exciting. My biggest day ever though was twelve thousand two hundred and forty-one dollars. Now, this wasn't just from in-home demos. Pause. 
Positive. I'm planting a seed right here for phone orders during a push. In the future, how cool. I sold six thousand dollars that day on the way to the conference in a cab for twenty minutes. It was it, because you planted the seed with the all seed these people prior right here, to. And I yeah. tell them right here. So I actually, and they freak out when they see you sold that in a day. Yep, Mrs. Jones, that was in twenty-four hours. Now, yeah, I did sell a few thousand in homes. I actually sold my first Cutco kitchen that day, mm -hmm. and that was the first day where someone bought everything. But, and the rest of them were just, you know, some basic orders. Someone else just bought just the family set, and someone else bought just the basic set. And I make it just like yeah, that. Yeah. They don't even see the demo, and yeah. people are buying just the basic sets, yeah. you know? They haven't even seen that yet. But, Mrs. Jones, what that was really about for me, uh, the last day of this camp, the last two weeks of this campaign, I was actually in my best friend's house with her. She was really not doing well. It was right between Christmas and New Year's, so she couldn't get any aids. No one could come over to her house, so I actually moved into her house for that week. Wow. Gave up all my demos. My mom's like, Aviva, this is the last two weeks. It's crunch time. Everyone's doing demos. My goal for the scholarship wasn't to be number one. If my goal was to be number one, I would have been number one. Okay. Uh, Justin Ledford beat me by 14 grand. I really would have been number one if I wanted to. My goal is to finish top five. Mm -hmm. So right before that last day, I was actually going to finish number four or number five, you know, based on those standings that come out every week. I was really nervous that I was going to bump out hmm. of top five, and my goal was to finish top five. So that day, I booked up demos. I did three demos. I told my best friend, I'm like, listen, I'm leaving for the day. I'll be back. I promise I'll be back. And, you know, I walked into her house that night well past midnight, and I was on the phone with JBB. That was, like, the, our first real conversation. It was oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that was a great night. He was just floored at my number for the day. He was just like, talk to me. <laughs> so, cool. But, yeah, so Mrs. Jones, what happened was I went to those demos, but then I was so far away, and I was so afraid of losing my spot, I called up all my old customers. So, remember, when I started, it was September. I didn't know anything about these knives. I didn't know, you know, I just sold a little bit to a lot of people, and... You know, I sold a little bit here, a little bit there. I didn't know much about it, so I would call someone who had only bought a little bit from me, and I would say, listen, Mrs. Jones, and I, you know, replayed my phone conversation with them, telling them what this is going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, and I had people buying, you know, my, that Cutco kitchen I actually sold over the phone. This wasn't on an appointment. This was to someone who bought a slicer and petite carver for me. Awesome. Yeah, it's amazing what those double Ds can do, so. Yep. <laughs> so, um, I don't say that. I, I got you, I got you, I got you. I'm just. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Anyways, so I actually sold nine thousand dollars over the phone to old customers. So you know, when I have an, another push period, another Mike Arietta competition, you may get a phone call from me. And I actually just had someone who bought a homemaker for me who is going to buy more. And she says, "Let's save it for one of those phone conversations." I'm like, Mr. Jones, prices are going up. Are you sure? She's like, "Let's save it for one of those phone conversations." And they're already prepared for me yeah. to call them to buy more because of this page. And then I dive right into it.